Hello, I am Evernoob, and I am back in my usual skin, as it were. So, what does I want to do today? Well, it's kind of a special episode, only really to me. And that is because this is episode 37 of Hitra, my ongoing survival series. And 37 is my favorite number. So, what I want to do is I want to go on a bit of a walk and talk and talk about me. And what I'm mainly going to do is try to get some more wolf types, but it's more of a chill hangout type uh, thing. I think what I'm going to do is head off that way and get back there. Then we'll start looking for some new wolf variants. I think it's mostly taiga over here, so I'm only expecting we'll get maybe a handful of the new wolf types. If I go straight this way, I want to say there's a mountain. Maybe we'll get lucky and there's one there, but... So now that I'm in the snowy taiga, I could probably start concentrating on looking... <sighs> you are the old type. Sorry, buddy. I will leave you to the wild. And while I'm out here roaming about, I figure I could answer some uh, questions that came into my community poll. Uh, first one being, how did I get into Minecraft? And what are some of my early inspirations? Um, I used to play... I actually got introduced kind of... Randomly one day my roommate at the time he had a computer and he had gotten it and he was playing on a server with some friends And was showing me the basics. This would have been This probably eight ten years ago. I'm not sure and Then eventually him and I started building our own world Built like a central hub and then we both kind of split off and then we eventually just kept building up little tiny bases like I had a, a super big oak tree base and then we went further across the desert, and we're, we were trying to wall off a huge, huge perimeter. And this was, I think, 1.7. Um, never beat the dragon. Or no, we beat the dragon, but besides that, we didn't really do too much of the, like, the end game challenges. We were kind of just explorers. The reason I remember it, because right after we had been on that mutual uh, game for quite some time... Then Andesite, Granite, and Diorite came out. was the next update. And we played for a bit, and then I think he moved out. Or maybe I moved out. I'm not sure. can't remember exactly the time frame here, because it was a while ago. But yeah, it was around that time, and then we just stopped playing. But yeah, that was my introduction to Minecraft. And then after that, I, I hadn't played in years and years and years. And then I moved to Colorado. And while I was out there, after about a year out there, the COVID stuff happened. And where I was at was a real touristy area of Colorado. So everything was shut down and I was just kind of bored. Actually, let me rewind because prior to that, I had started watching uh, Minecraft videos again on YouTube. So for about a year or two, basically the, the person that got me into uh, Minecraft YouTube content stuff was Python. Python MC, Python GB, the Pythonator. Um, I started watching him, and I I think it was around the time of Flora Valley when he was making that. And I got really back into it. That led me to Pixel Rifts, and then Python also led me to Hermitcraft, and that kind of exploded into its own thing so that was sort of my introduction back into minecraft and then yeah once covid came about i or i i was bored so i re-downloaded minecraft and started playing again and then first few videos on my channel was a steep learning curve of how to edit and do stuff on youtube with my setup which is pretty uh pretty old i have a 2011 computer and just finding software that works with it can be a nightmare but 
and that's basically the beginnings of my channel is going through that process and then yeah kind of some random videos here and there i decided just to try a survival series and see how it goes and now i'm on episode 37 so yeah that answers that question hopefully to some degree i hope that was enough is there any wolves over here to be found Ooh, this would be a nice spot to find them since it's all open now do wolves do they spawn out in these like open snowy areas? I actually don't know. Oh, there's a polar bear. Ah! You're mad at me. Sorry. I forgot. You have cubs and stuff. Oh no, I didn't bring many rockets with me. I gotta be. Well, I'll be walking back once I find any of them. Uh huh. So I'm not seeing any out here, so maybe this. Ooh, there's an igloo! So I'm guessing it doesn't have the basement judging by this weird generation. But we can pretend, right? One of the more... I always forget that those exist. It's kind of cool, just... for the immersion side of it, anyway. Oh, yeah. Maybe I've been here before. These are the same... regular types as well. But toots! Where are your relatives? This is more... Or something different would happen, right? Through here? Ow. I really like the 3D textures on the mushrooms. I think they should change this just to differentiate them. I think that would be a perfect natural improvement to the game. But wolves, wolves, wolves. Where are wolves? Ooh. Mountain? Is it a mountain? Is there wolves? Don't wolves spawn up in these groves or orchards or whatever? Uh-oh, I'm freezing. Uh-oh. Look at all that powdered snow. On to the next one. Ooh, even more. Is there mountain wolves? Is that a thing? Am I making that up in my brain? I haven't found one type yet. So I'm beginning to wonder. But what I should be doing is getting all this emerald. I don't have much for emerald ore. And mountains are the place to go find it. Oh, well, this is kind of a cool little area here. Okay, is there wolves in around here? And I'm gonna need to sleep. Uh-oh. Huh. Bad spot to stop. I need to sleep, though. Right, so... Is there wolves in mountain? Back to my question. I'm not sure that they do be do be do. Well, that was unhelpful. What's over here? Well, it's an Arctic fox that apparently isn't scared of me. Did I tame you and just leave you here? When was I over here? Why are you sitting? Why can I not? I don't know what to do. You're not afraid of me, but I can't... I don't even think you can unsit a fox. What are you? Is that something specific in the game? Does that mean anything? What do you mean? I'll leave you there, I suppose. I don't know what you're doing. It's creepy how you just stare and sit. It's like you're a cat, but different. Well, I've continued wandering. Um, over that way is a savanna, so I might go back that way. But I came across this, so I figure why not try digging this up? Looks like a buried uh, ship. But I am out of rockets, so I need to be a little bit more careful with those. This will not be enough to get me home, but um, things and stuff. Now, I'm wondering if there actually will be anything down here, or if this is all just kind of a waste of time, but... Aha! Ooh. We will take those. Well, some more armor trims. That's cool. 
Um, is there more? Probably a treasure map somewhere. Aha, uh -huh, here's a door. Buried treasure map. Okay, where do be this? So let's just further up this way. So I might as well check this way just to be sure of any... There's Savannah up here anyway. Maybe we'll come across some of the new wolves. Another ship. It's right up on over there. Can it, why didn't I bring an ender chest? That would have been a smart. This buried treasure is going to be like right under... Right underneath this ship, it seems like. Now, is this going to be the exact same one? Yes. Okay. Ooh, I do need the paper. Why didn't I think of that at the previous thing? The fool. What else does we have? More paper. Ooh, and gunpowder. Wonderful. This is how we make more rockets. By think playing with the game. All right, it's time to adventure this thing. Where? This way. Right in like the center here. Where is it? Aha. Ooh. We will take it all. Well, obviously not because we doesn't have enough stuff, right? Or enough room. Right. What am I looking at? I'm still trying to get wolves. I keep forgetting the task at hand. Getting way too distracted. Okay, here's Savannah. Let's go this way and hope to see some of the new wolves. Should be really obvious because I think the type that generates in the Savannah generates in big packs. Maybe. Maybe I'm making that up. But where are these new wolves? I feel like I've led myself astray for the majority of this episode. Well, maybe they are not in savannas. And maybe it is time I finally dis like check on where wolves actually is and isn't. And now I'm out of rockets with nothing really too promising in sight. Man, wolves are tricky to find, apparently. How far away am I? 4,000 blocks? Well, I came to another edge. But I figure it's a good time to answer another question. Um, what is my favorite biome? Somebody asked. And perfect timing because my favorite biome is this. What is it? The old growth taiga? Yeah. This sort of look. Um... Where I'm at, this is very akin to, like, my sort of, the look of the area I live in. So it feels very, um, what's the word? Homey? Home? Like, it uh, feels very much like I'm at home in this biome. And I think it's one of the better ones as far as diversity of blocks and plants and just different things. I Rather than, like, voting on a specific biome, I wish there'd be sort of an overhaul to make all the other biomes look like this. Have this sort of... It's like, I think this is, like, one of the more perfectly balanced, just immersively and visually, when you're going through it. The the big old oak... Or, not oak. Old growth taiga biome is my favorite. It, where I'm at, I live in Minnesota, so it's... We get a lot of pine trees and a lot of forests. Like this, just like going out in my backyard back home. So this is it feels very very familiar. So, but I still haven't found one single wolf. So there's thing anything around here. <gasps> oh, one you ah worst thing doobie thing. And a black one at that. Are you one of the rare ones? They spawn with more than one? Is there another, another guy around here somewhere? Come on. Uh, which way is home? I should probably focus up on that. That way and that way. Okay. You and me, buddy, we got a long ways to go. I think with a little amount of success I've had, 
I'm going to focus on getting this guy home now. Because it has been a long, long ways off to get you. Or to find any wolf, really, so... I think now we focus on getting you all the way back. So, I've been wandering a ways, but yeah. As I said, the taiga is my favorite biome. And reminds me of home here in Minnesota. And one of the benefits of living... Uh-oh. Let's get you right on past them. I might jump off the chain if not. Um, one of the benefits of living in Minnesota is the variety of seasons. I know most people, when you think about seasons, you think winter, spring, summer, fall, right? Every place has their own weather. And Minnesota is kind of unique in that it has a very wide variety of weather due to all the lakes we have. But, uh, yeah, so we start out the year with winter in January, and it goes basically from that, right at the end of January into February, it goes directly into Siberia, where it gets brutally cold, like negative 30, negative 40 with a wind chill, wind chill, and sometimes it gets so cold it feels like the wind, it's too cold for the wind to blow. It's very, very strange, you just walk out... The coat you're wearing feels like it's going to break. Everything sort of hurts. It's very, very brutal. And then after Siberia, we go back to winter for like two weeks. Which is nice. Winter's like nice where it's... There's snow on the ground, but it's tolerable outside. And you don't have to worry about injury due to just being outside. Followed by that, we have unlocking, which is simply the time when things... It's not really spring. It's more where things are learning how to live again. I don't know how to describe it, really. It's bizarre. And that goes on for quite a while, where it'll dip between nice and then blizzards and then blizzards and rain... And then blizzards and sleet, and then blizzards and sleet and rain and snow. It's a time when the weather is still adjusting. And then for, that goes for about a month and a half. And then when you reach April. And what April is, it's not a month in Minnesota. It is about a two week period where the weather does not know what it is. It'll be 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when you wake up, it'll get up to 60, and then at 2 o'clock, it'll drop to 40, and then it'll be up to 70 when you go to bed, because the weather, and then the next day, flip all those numbers around in any order, because the weather does not know what it do. And that is the season of April in Minnesota. Finally, we get spring for about a day and a half right before the start of June, and as soon as June starts, we are into mosquito season. And occasionally June bugs when it's their time of the year to get around or come about. But yeah, mosquito season, with all the lakes and rivers and whatnot, lasts a good old fun time. Almost the entire month of June. Oh, come on. Yes. Maybe I can... Oh... Well, thanks. Here, you can have your prize. No! Don't... Okay, you don't want rabbit food? Fine. Uh, but, yeah, mosquito season is absolutely miserable. Anywhere you walk out, if there is a tree in view, you will be bitten. If you don't have some sort of, uh... repellent on of any kind. I gotta make sure I'm going in the right direction still. But, right out of mosquito season, we go into Florida. Florida is a special season in Minnesota, late June, early July. It is just 100% humidity or raining and about 80 to 100 degrees every single day for about two to four weeks, two to six weeks maybe. And finally we get to summer. Summer starts late July, early August, and it's the first tolerable season. Where you, where you know what to expect. The weatherman is right at least, you know, 50% of the time. 
and you can go about enjoying your day. Followed by that, at end, end of August, early September, or late sep early September, what am I saying? And it goes right into uh, fall, another tolerable season, which is pretty nice as well. It's actually really beautiful up in Minnesota because there's such a variety of trees. You get so many colors just driving around anywhere, especially around the lake country. There's one feature I wish they would add into Minecraft. It's like an autumn forest, just bright yellow, red, orange, purple. Is there another one right there? Another igloo. Come on, wolf. How about that? No, you just leave the rabbits alone. You've done enough. And then finally, after summer and fall, so a few tolerable bits, we go into brisking. And brisking is the time right before winter where there's no snow on the ground, but it feels so cold because of that. Like, cold in Minnesota, we know how cold it can get here. However, when there's no snow on the ground, it feels about 15 to 20 degrees colder than it actually is. Like, 30, 40 degrees without snow. Intolerable weather. Coat, hat, everything. Put snow on the ground, make it 20 to 10 degrees, no wind. Hey, it's, you can run around in a t-shirt. No problem. But yeah, that's kind of Minnesota weather in a nutshell. It's funny living up here and thinking about it because it is sort of strange and unique in that way compared to even states that are right around us but let's follow this river for a while um next question that came in is what new mob or hang on i gotta look it up i thought i had it written down what new mob or boss would you like to see in minecraft um, I actually made a video on this not too long ago, and I think if I was to go with bosses, there would be two. Ooh, and I even have Heart of the Sea. So, one, in Ocean Monuments, underneath, underneath the entire monument, there would be a chamber with like a fossil in it. And there would be one block specifically, maybe even a reinforced deep slate, just to have it in another spot. Or some block in each of that. But you would go in there and you would put the heart of the sea in there. And that would make an ancient guardian. In fact, I'm going to jump over to my creative world and show that. So, over here in my creative world. Right here, I have this sort of setup here. And what you would do is you put a heart of sea right on there. I just use bedrock as, as an example. And that would summon... The Ancient Guardian. And this is all just armor stands and nonsense to try to make something work. But I think it would be a cool feature to have an actual boss uh, for the, the Ocean Monument. Besides the Elder Guardian. The, the thing with Minecraft bosses that I like, like the Wither, the Dragon, the Warden, they are kind of do-at-your-own pace and your own sort of... Like you decide when to go and do them. So this would be something you'd be summoning in. Um, it'd have a built-in mechanic where you'd have four pup for fish, one, two elder guardians, and four um, regular guardians constantly spawning in here and tropical fish. This is just kind of a rough layout of the chamber that would be underneath the ocean monument for this guy. That is one of them. The other one is actually here as well. Right here, I would like a deer or elk, but like a boss version of that. And what this is, I called it the stag, but this would be a passive boss. And the reason I like this as an idea, one, it would, the way you'd find it is you would find, oops, stripped logs naturally in the forest. And I think that'd be kind of a cool thing to include. I like in some way including all the blocks in Minecraft in the actual worlds, if and when possible. But what's cool about a passive mob 
is I think what this would have, it would have, it wouldn't, it would hit, and it could hit you pretty hard, but it'd give you a knockback, so it'd send you flying away when it hit you, and then it would take off running in the other direction. So this would actually be, a, like, a mob you really, really have to keep track of. You know, it would have, maybe it'd leave uh, dirt paths as well, along with the, so you'd actually have to track it. So this would really be, like, a hunting down type challenge. But those would be my two options for a new kind of boss mob in Minecraft. Uh, let's go back to my regular, to what I was doing. Continuing onward. And yeah, besides that, as far as other new mobs go, um, one that I would like, that I've made a few different videos on, not in the survival series, but... But yeah, the only other mob I can think of, I made a few videos on it, and... Just random videos that when I think of kind of ideas that don't fit anywhere in my survival series. Be something called the Ender Goo. And that what the Ender Goo is, it's a basically a slime variant for the end. You know, the nether's got the magma cube. Um Overworld has slime. I just think that the the end should have its own slime variant. And I've given some uses for it in the past, but I think there's a lot you could do with something like that as far as drops and utility. Maybe drop something to work with expanding inventory. That's how the things I've used it for in the past. But, um, yeah, those are kind of the three mob types that I would go with. And let's keep running here, Wolf. we got still got over a thousand blocks to go, I think. Although we're getting there. We are getting there. Hold on a minute. Come, wolf. I see other wolf. Aha! I'm not get brought up. How about it? Well, who would have thought? Following the. Ooh! Hip, how about it? We got. Okay. Come on, all of you. Continue to follow me. Splendid. Well, it wasn't completely in vain. I've just been following the river back this whole time, and I guess I should keep my eyes more peeled. Um, I haven't really been looking off to the sides much, but you guys were luckily right there, so... Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, we just need to keep going in this general direction. Um, and I have no idea where I am, but I know I still got a ways to go, and it's this way, so... Cool beans, let's get you guys all the way home wonderful news we made it all the way back so now we can get these guys in here but before I do that I also I grab some stuff along the way and I close this in this is my uh, snowman enclosure let's see I'm not sure how many I need in here to be honest so we'll just kind of set them up and let them do their thing. But yeah, this I'm pretty sure when it rained it would dump on them and then they'd eventually die. So I believe I fixed that. Now, there we go. And then for these guys, I'm going to want a few of you to be derpied. Derp heads. There we go. Did he get hit? Did I see one of them take damage? Huh, huh, I thought one of these guys looked like he got hit by something, but... I believe they should be safe now. They shouldn't be able to get him. Let's hope not. So we got two derps and two regular guys. Is that our setup here? Maybe we want three derps. Which is, which M are better? Yes. Three derps. There we go. And just a quick little access door. There we go. Here we go. That exhibit down and still got two of you. Right? Okay. Luckily I did find a spot with more. But now, back to you fellers. So we'll just click this. Wonderful. Go check it out. You've got all sorts of places around you. And if we need to, if it starts looking crowded in here, luckily they all kind of find spots to go hang out, but... 
it starts looking crowded, we can always extend this wall here back even further if need be. But so far, it's not looking too bad. Well, look at you go. How about that? I mean, yeah, we could bring it quite a ways back, so no big deal there, right? Okay, other thing to do over here. When I was making this building, as I started laying out all my records, kind of realized I am short on records. So, another thing I made when I got home over in my creeper farm. Which is funny, I always forget I even have a creeper farm, even though it's kind of a big build. Um, I've actually added in a secondary little temporary thing. It's not that efficient. Right there, there's an open fence, and that goes right to where creepers are, so they have to kind of, like, go in the stream right there, because you can hear them dying up there above me, but... Come down here. Just do that for now, but the land down there and the water will push them all the way here, and I'll just stand here once one's there. If I open that up, that back there, ow, it's a skeleton named DJ, so he's going to be our means of collecting records. So what I want to do, essentially, is go up here and wait to see if I can see one fall through here. Actually, they, might, they probably won't spawn if I'm there, will they? Now they think about it, I'm probably too close, no matter where I am around here. I... Hmm, maybe I go all the way up to the top, and then... If I go chill out in the phantom farm area... For a bit... I never use this, I don't know why I made it. I haven't spent, like, any time up here for phantoms. I think it's mainly because there's nothing to do up here, so... When I forget to sleep and phantoms spawn around me when I'm down there, well, if I fly up here, I'm above them, and they're all just still flying at whatever level they kind of hang around in, so... Kind of a... one of those farms... I don't regret it, it's a nice little eyepiece from afar, but... I have had to go through twice on this farm as well, and... Replace cats. I don't know if they eventually wandered off. I think what I'm going to have to do is wait up there a whole bunch longer. They were spawning, but it's literally one block out of the entire bottom they can go into. And now they think about it, they might not even be able to go in there. Hmm. I'm going to have to do some craftiness. Alrighty. I have been up here for I don't know how long. I just went AFK and left everything else to kind of go run in the background. But I want to see if any of these worked. So if not, I'm going to have to think of something new. It's pretty unlikely. The more I think about it, I did go in there and put a trap door basically above this. So when they're kind of flowing in, they run into that. And hopefully fall down, but... It's only one block out of every... Where's the thing? Here we are. Uh-huh. Not a one. So, well, patuts. Maybe I'll go... That was only... I was only away for like an hour or so, so maybe what I'll do is I'll actually just go AFK overnight here and see if any creepers fall through and go from there, but... Anyways, I'll come back and once I figure out that. So I will see you in a bit. Hello! I have been AFK for quite some time. Up in this little tiny little hidey hole up here. Actually, I don't know how long it was, but let's turn that off. Um, let's see, I put everything in here. But yeah, now it's time to see. I basically, what I did was I went to bed. I made a little hidey hole for myself and went to bed and just let the game play until it stopped or reset or whatever. So now, let's go down and see if we have got lucky with any creepers down in the bottom part. Not a one. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm going to have to expand my thinking on this. 
Okay, I'm not sure if this will do any better. I basically just opened it up to three wide there. But it still requires them all to fall off this side. So maybe I need to alter up top. But I want to go test this for a bit. Just to see if we can get lucky. If I can get just one as proof of concept, that would be fantastic. I'm just going to wait up here for a bit. And then go down and check. Alrighty, I know I have a couple. I had to, I'll go up and show in a minute. I had to redo the inside. It's still not efficient by any means, but yeah, I know I heard at least, oh, good sign. Two? Wait. Oh, why did I risk that? Okay, right. So if I go stand right here and then open it up. Yes, get him. Did I get a record? Aha! Finally! New record. Come on, Skellington, you can do it. Should probably get him a better bow. Right. And there we go. Well, these are all three new ones, so I'm going to go check what all... Did another one just fall in here? I heard some sizzling up top. Nope. He's above me, okay. But what I had to do... Okay, now if we kind of look... In there... I kind of just made a spot where they can land and kind of... It's all kind of based on free roaming stuff. Just put fences in this wall in place of the water. And then they come down here. Fall through there. And then they kind of eventually pathfind there. And come down here. Then, yep, just open up this. It shows me the skeleton, so all good there. But now, let's go test out these new records. All right, let's see what these sound like. Oh, man. It's amazing how many things in this game... I really like this. I don't even know if I've ever heard this record. So many things are in this game and I have absolutely n no knowledge of or anything like that. But that's kind of fun. What is that one called? Strad. Okay. Where's... This is my record disc side. What do we have next? Mall? Kind of ethereal sounding. I need a fast forward and skip button. Okay, that's not too bad. And finally, what is this? Melody. Okay, this one I have heard. A bit goofy. This one's almost haunted mansion y. Alrighty. Well, perfecto. Now. I do need to run a test. I made the creeper enclosure at the beginning of last episode. I need to see how easy they are going to be. I think what I might do is go AFK and I'll come back and I'll do some testing on creepers for figuring out how I'm going to wrangle them and get them into the zoo. Especially a charge one. That is going to be a pain. So... I'm going to go AFK again, and I will see you in a bit. And we will be playing around with more creepers, so... Bye-bye! Well, I AFK'd overnight again, and... One more creeper, one more disc. I think it was that same strawed one, so... New plan! So... To get two creepers... We're just gonna call them... Thunder... And Lightning... I've got an invis potion here. Let's see, I need to get rid of all my goodies. Yeah, I'm basically going to run out. It's dark out right now. Run out into the darkness. Now I'm ready to brave the wild. And then, yeah, so let's take this. I'm just going to try to name tag them. I also realize I don't have a trident. 
So at some point, or if I do, I have hidden it from myself. They can still see me. What the heck? I thought I would be invin invisible, invincible. Maybe it's just creepers that can't see me. Because I think I can run right up. Do that. Don't blow up. Yes, okay. You're good. Okay, this is different than, I, than my testing. Ah! Don't blow up. Okay. So two of them are name tagged. It was a potion of night vision. Wow, I did that. About as wrong as I possibly could, huh? So I'm not invisible at all. I'll just run by everybody. Goodbye. Good day. So potion of night vision was not what I needed. Oh, I feel stupid. But that is kind of a good test because now I know I can actually get pretty close and still get away. But the proof of concept is there, so I can probably actually just take them out and go buy some name, more name tags. Okay, are you one of the goodies? Okay, come on, Thunder. I don't know where your friend went. So next time, rather than using night vision, actually use the invisibility potion, probably be a smart. Now we have to spend some time figuring out how to get them over into the zoo without too many casualties. In fact, are you the other? Oh, he was. Uh-huh. Sorry, sheep. Some testing going around. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of Thunder. So I think what I'm going to have to do is find a spot closer to that area. Cause trying to walk him over the whole way I think will be a nightmare. Alrighty. Good news. Right way over there. We got our second one name tag Lightning. So now we got two creepers and two boats. And I need to figure out how I'm going to. One thing I was going to do with this guy. Did I grab another invisibility potion? No, I did not. But. Two creeper, creepers for the zoo exhibit. Caught. Now it's matter of getting them over there and whatnot. Where did I put leads? I had a bunch of them. Alrighty. We are moving with danger now. Oh, and it's getting dark. Come on, you two. Up oh, this way. Let's get you over into the light. This isn't bad at all. But how do I get you all the way over and around? Okay. You don't seem bothered by me at all. So we will leave you there. I think what I'm going to have to do is make a dirt tunnel the entire way there. However, I need to protect you guys. Just so hopefully they don't get struck by lightning. It was thundering just a bit ago, but all right. We are going to figure out the next step of this process. It's very, very... Very on edge the whole time, so I'm not really talking, so I might try to get them over there first, or I should probably go set up the cage. So I'm going to do some messing around with that, and I'll be back. Hello. Look at me all invisible. Well, we are entering danger time here, and I am ready. I should probably take that off before I forget. You can see I got I got thunder down here. And I waited out sat down here till I heard a rainstorm just had my volume up in the background, but now lightning is up there and fully charged, so let's cue up some uh epic music and see if we can get him down here first without any problems. This has been very I should probably open up a free hand because they got a short fuse these ones okay so far so good <laughs> oh is the moss gonna screw it up moss actually might be working in my favor 
Okay, this is not the most comfortable position to be in. But I think that works for now. And he hasn't exploded, exploded in my face. So it's another good, overall good. How am I going to do this? I want to get him back there. First, I got to trap him back there before I bring in Thunder here. Oh! Oh my gosh, okay. I, now I need you to get back there. Why do you want to go to that corner so badly? What is over there that fascinates you so? Mr. Lightning. Okay, stay there for a second. Look at him over here. Do you see? Mm hmm. Hey. That's right. Okay. Yes. Okay, he's in there. Step one of the process complete. Now it's just a matter of getting blocks back in there. I basically, I'm going to have to piston myself into getting all that stuff in there. Ooh, he looks upset and angry. The biggest thing was getting that lightning rod in front of him. And now we can bring in thunder. Although, first let's get that back area sorted. So what am I going to need? I'm going to need pistons. Do I have anything around here? Up. Oh. Right, okay. He is in and set so now now we just need to get thunder in here yeah he was the first one i brought down actually went pretty well except for right when we got in here i basically pulled him in the whole way so we got in here we had a bit of an explosion so i had to redo all this glass and whatnot but now the smart thing to do would be to actually take this this time the reason i got it all right, Thunder. Come with me. All right, he's in. No. You're okay. Just need to do that. Those are all in. Right. And. Oh! <laughs> I got caught on the vines. Oh, when I spawned, I forgot I slept down here. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Oh, I had to just back into those vines, which. Right. Well, back to it, I suppose. What's that? Okay. Round two. Am I still... I'm not invisible. But... Come on. Oh. Okay. Thunder and lightning are now finally in. And... Ugh, this was a tense exhibit to bit build. Also, I can clean up my mess back here. Alrighty, well, that was one of, I think, the more difficult or at least intense exhibits I'm going to have. So, I'm kind of glad it's over with. Wasn't really planning on jumping into the hostile mob exhibits really quite yet, but... Baby steps, and you gotta start somewhere. Though I'm not sure a charge creeper is, in fact, a baby step. But. Did I already lose one? Where's he gone? Oh. Oh, wow, your active camo actually worked pretty good. I didn't even see him. I was, like, sitting here. Just right behind there. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with the green glass here. I had a, one little thing of glass panes. Just... A little bit of differentiation, but this is just kind of the start of this area anyway. And I did find my trident. It was in here all along. It's probably been in there every time I've opened up something. You hid from me again. You sly devil. 
Oh yeah, and I've also kind of started working on the interior for down here. Sort of a strange assortment of mobs, but yeah, after that, I'm surprised nothing went wrong really with the the bigger explosion guy because they got a short timer. Luckily, they're in there now, and I never have to think about it again. Right, creeper. Right. But I've been crammed in this little area for quite some time, futzing about, so I think it is time for me to end the episode. Let's check on our new wolves. Oh my gosh, fox. That is a horrendous sound. Where's the newbies? There's one. There's the other. And the black wolf. I think I saw him over here. Look at that. Claiming his territory. Thanks for watching. I've been Evernoob. Uh, like if you like, subscribe if you want. One more thing before I go, while I'm sitting here. Another question I got was, what is my favorite and least favorite block in Minecraft? And I haven't really thought about this. I just remembered the question. My favorite actually might be the mushroom stem or brown mushroom block. Um, and it's for two reasons. A, you get an additional texture when you stack them and break one. Whoa. Stack them and break them. And B, it's a really good scaffolding block. And C, it looks good with a lot, pretty much anything. Like in a build, you can just kind of throw the, at least the mushroom stem. You can use it as an accent or the whole build. It always looks pretty, ugh, drowned. Enough. Ooh, my another favorite block contender would be maybe dried kelp blocks, just for this really unique texture with the wrap on it that you get. Okay, I've had a sleep, and I put on my morning mask to exfoliate, and now let's get to that question. What is my least favorite block? First off, ooh, Riptide Sharpness 3. Interesting. I probably actually, weirdly enough, although it is one of the most useful items in the game, cobblestone as a block. I find it really, even though I use it a lot and you can see it over there, mix in with things, I don't know, when I'm holding it in my hand, I just don't, it's like it, it bothers me somehow. So oh, that doesn't make sense either. You use cobblestone for ah, so many things. Actually, you know what? It's not my least favorite block because it's also super functional, but the texture of it. Iron. An iron block. I would like it to match more with iron bars, like that grayer, more metallic look. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I have a problem with any blocks. I think my problem is how they look next to things. So I might be less a specific block and more a connect connected texture type thing. Like all the polished variants, iron ore, I would like. Uh, but then I would want the ability to turn them on and end off. So that doesn't make sense either. What am I talking about? I don't know what my least favorite block is. I don't know what blocks are. I don't know who I am, what I am. This question has sent me into an existential crisis. You know what, I will be boring, and I'll say endstone, because I wish it had more uh, variance in the cutter. There we go. If we had like a polish endstone, or something like that, something more along the lines of quartz, as far as distinctions go. Or my least favorite block might be walls. Because they need all of the polished and different style variants, I think. That's one thing I find myself using a lot and determining builds, because when I go to texture, a lot of times I want to add little poke holes of, you know, uh, stairs and slab variants and walls. And a lot of them only have the one texture. So I'm just going to say walls as a whole is my least favorite block, even though I use them all the time and nothing I've said so far makes sense. So, all that being said, thanks for watching. I've been Evernoob, and I will see you in the next episode. Buh? Wait for it. Buh-bye.
Ooh! That's gonna come in handy. That was what I was gonna give my drone guy. Perfect. Bye-bye.